And what we had is a group of girls that were coming to this park and um, being given a little bit of alcohol, having a good time, um, driven around in cars, um, sat in cars, music playing quite loud, um, given cigarettes and, and everything free, everything at no cost. Um, and then as grooming starts to escalate, what happens is they start to get threatened. Um, and I remember one girl saying to me is, he knew everything about me, Jane, and all I ever knew was his nickname. He knew my family, he knew where my mum worked, he knew what my dad did. So when he threatened me, he threatened me with things like he was going to go to my disabled grandma's house and have a shot, he was going to rape my mum. And I believed all that. I believed it because that's what he was doing to me. talking about some of the worst kind of violence and abuse that I think um, the world's maybe not ready to listen to, you know, but, but you're talking um, beatings, threats, um, broken instruments being used, torture, um, girls having petrol poured on them, you're talking um, tragic, tragic lives destroyed, really all those children destroyed. I was speaking to um, a member of the community, a Pakistani uh, man who was also a taxi driver a few weeks ago. And one of the things that he said to me is, well, two things that he, he said and, and stuck with me really is, as a taxi driver, if he'd have known about this, he would have helped and he would have been the eyes and ears and he would have shared information. But as a Pakistani man, his education has never ever covered anything like this. I'm not in a position to give a full answer because I'm not working with children at the moment. I'm trying to support those children I worked with years ago that are now young adults. However, they are telling me that they are aware that it's still happening and they see it still happening and they've seen their abusers driving around with young people in their cars. <laughs> 